At the Club by Richard Hovey. Read for LibriVox.org by Leanne Howlett. When a pretty maiden passes by the window down the street, cards and billiards lose their sweet. Conversation on old brasses languishes. Up go the glasses. Nice complexion. Dainty feet. When a pretty maiden passes by the window down the street. Smith forgets the toiling masses. Robinson the fallen wheat. All the club is indiscreet. Ah, the wisest men are asses when a pretty maiden passes by the window down the street. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Barbara Fritchie by John Greenleaf Whittier. Read for LibriVox.org by Jan McGillivray. Barbara Fritchie. Up from the meadows rich with corn, clear in the cool September morn, the clustered spires of Frederick stand green walled by the hills of Maryland. Round about them orchards sweep, apple and peach tree fruited deep, fair as the garden of the Lord to the eyes of the famished rebel horde on that pleasant morn of the early fall when Lee marched over the mountain wall, over the mountains winding down, horse and foot, into Fredericktown. Forty flags with their silver stars, forty flags with their crimson bars, flapped in the morning wind, the sun of noon looked down, and saw not one. Up rose old Barbara Fritchie then, bowed with her fourscore years and ten, Bravest of all in Fredericktown, she took up the flag the men hauled down. In her attic window the staff she set, to show that one heart was loyal yet. Up the street came the rebel tread, Stonewall Jackson riding ahead. Under his slouched hat, left and right he glanced, the old flag met his sight. Halt! The dust-brown ranks stood fast. Fire! Out blazed the rifle blast. It shivered the window, pane and sash. It rent the banner with seam and gash. Quick as it fell from the broken staff, Dame Barbara snatched the silken scarf. She leaned far out on the window sill and shook it forth with a royal will. Shoot, if you must, this old gray head, but spare your country's flag, she said. A shade of sadness, a blush of shame over the face of the leader came. The nobler nature within him stirred to life at that woman's deed and word. Who touches a hair of yon gray head dies like a dog. March on, he said. All day long through Frederick Street sounded the tread of marching feet. All day long that free flag tossed over the heads of the rebel host. Ever its torn folds rose and fell on the loyal winds that loved it well. And through the hill gaps sunset light shone over it a warm good night. Barbara Fritchie's work is o'er, and the rebel rides on his raids no more. Honor to her, and let a tear fall for her sake on Stonewall's bier. Over Barbara Fritchie's grave, Flag of freedom and union wave. Peace and order and beauty draw Round thy symbol of light and law. And ever the stars above Look down on thy stars below In Fredericktown. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Beginning of Summer by Po Chu Yi, 815 A.D. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. At the rise of summer, a hundred beasts and trees join in gladness that the season bids them thrive. Stags and does frolic in the deep woods. Snakes and insects are pleased by the rank grass. Winged birds love the thick leaves. 
Scaly fish enjoy the fresh weeds. But to one place summer forgot to come. I alone am left like a withered straw, banished to the world's end. Flesh and bone, all in distant ways. From my native place no tidings come. Rebel troops flood the land with war. Sullen grief in the end, what will it bring? I am only wearing my own heart away. Better far to let both body and mind blindly yield to the fate that heaven made. Sun Yang abounds in good wine. I will fill my cup and never let it be dry. On Penn River fish are cheap as mud. Early and late I will eat them, boiled and fried, with morning rice at the temple under the hill, and evening wine at the island in the lake. Why should my thoughts turn to my native land? For in this place one could well end one's age. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Christmas 1915 by Percy McKay Read for LibriVox.org by Podvoxer Now is the midnight of the nations, dark, even as death beside her blood-dark seas, earth like a mother in birth agonies, screams in her travail and the planets hark, her million-throated terror, naked, stark, her torso writhes enormous, and her knees shudder against the shadowed Pleiades, wrenching the night's imponderable arc. Christ! What shall be delivered to the morn? Out of these pangs, if indeed another, morn shall succeed this night, or this vast mother. Survive to know the blood-spent offspring, torn. From her racked flesh? What splendour from the smother? What new-winged world, or mangled god still born? End of Christmas 1915 this recording is in the public domain. Dreamland by Christina Georgina Rossetti Read for LibriVox.org by Clarica Where sunless rivers weep their waves into the deep, She sleeps a charmed sleep, awake her not. Led by a single star she came from very far, To seek where shadows are her pleasant lot. She left the rosy morn, she left the fields of corn, For twilight cold and lorn, and water springs. Through sleep, as through a veil, she sees the sky look pale, And hears the nightingale that sadly sings. Rest, rest, a perfect rest, shed over brow and breast, Her face is towards the west, the purple land. She cannot see the grain ripening on hill and plain, she cannot feel the rain upon her hand. Rest, rest forevermore upon a mossy shore. Rest, rest at the heart's core till time shall cease. Sleep that no pain shall wake, night that no morn shall break, till joy shall overtake her perfect peace. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Garden of Proserpine by Algernon Charles Swinburne Read for LibriVox.org by Kristen Hughes Here, where the world is quiet, Here, where all trouble Seems dead winds and spent waves riot In doubtful dreams of dreams, I watch the green field growing For reaping folk and sowing, For harvest time and mowing, A sleepy world of streams. I am tired of tears and laughter, And men that laugh and weep Of what may come hereafter, For men that sow to reap. I am weary of days and hours, Blown buds of barren flowers, Desires and dreams and powers, And everything but sleep. Here life has death for neighbour, And far from eye or ear Wan waves and wet winds labour, Weak ships and spirits steer, They drive adrift, 
and whither they wot not who make thither, but no such winds blow hither, and no such things grow here. No growth of moor or coppice, no heather flower or vine, but bloomless buds of poppies, green grapes of proserpine, pale beds of blowing rushes, where no leaf blooms or blushes, save this whereout she crushes for dead men deadly wine, pale without name or number in fruitless fields of corn. They bow themselves and slumber all night till light is born, and like a soul belated, in hell and heaven unmated, by cloud and mist abated, comes out of darkness morn. The one was strong as seven, he too with death shall dwell, nor wake with wings in heaven, nor weep for pains in hell. The one were fair as roses, his beauty clouds and closes, and well though love reposes, in the end it is not well. Pale beyond porch and portal, crowned with calm leaves she stands, who gathers all things mortal with cold, immortal hands. Her languid lips are sweeter than loves who fear to greet her, to men that mix and meet her from many times and lands. She waits for each and other, she waits for all men born, forgets the earth her mother, the life of fruits and corn, and spring and seed and swallow take wing for her, and follow where summer song rings hollow and flowers are put to scorn. There go the loves that wither, the loves with wearier wings, and all dead years draw thither, and all disastrous things, dead dreams of days forsaken, blind buds that snows have shaken, wild leaves that winds have taken, red strays of ruined springs. We are not sure of sorrow, and joy was never sure. Today we'll die tomorrow. Time stoops to no man's lure. And love, grown faint and fretful, with lips but half regretful, sighs and with eyes forgetful, weeps that no loves endure. From too much love of living, from hope and fear set free, we thank with brief thanksgiving, whatever gods may be, that no life lives forever, that dead men rise up never, that even the weariest river winds somewhere safe to see. Then star nor sun shall waken, nor any change of light, nor sound of waters shaken, nor any sound or sight nor wintry leaves, nor vernal, nor days, nor things diurnal, only the sleep eternal in an eternal night. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Ivy Green by Charles Dickens Read for LibriVox.org by Podvoxer Oh, a dainty plant is the ivory green, That creepeth o'er ruins old. Of right choice food are his meals, I ween, In his cell so lone and cold. The world must be crumbled, the stone decayed, To pleasure his dainty whim, And the mouldering dust that years have made Is a merry meal for him. Creeping where no life is seen, A rare old plant is the ivory green. Fast he stealeth on, though he wears no wings, and a stanch old heart has he. How closely he twineth, how tight he clings to his friend, the huge oak tree. And slyly he traileth along the ground, and his leaves he gently waves, as he joyously hugs and crawleth round the rich mould of dead men's graves. Creeping where grim death has been, a rare old plant is the ivy green. Whole ages have fled, and their works decayed, and nations have scattered been, but the stout old ivy shall never fade. From its hale and hearty green, the brave old plant in its lonely days shall fatten upon the past, for the stateliest building man can raise is the ivy's food at last. 
Creeping on where time has been, a rare old plant is the ivy green. End of The Ivy Green. This recording is in the public domain. Johnny's History Lesson by Nixon Waterman. Read for LibriVox.org by Jan McGillivray. Johnny's History Lesson. I think of all the things at school a boy has got to do, that studying history as a rule is worst of all, don't you? Of dates there are an awful sight, and though I study day and night, there's only one I've got just right. That's 1492. Columbus crossed the Delaware in 1492. We whipped the British fair and square in 1492. At Concord and at Lexington, we kept the Redcoats on the run while the band played Johnny Get Your Gun in 1492. Pat Henry, with his dying breath in 1492, said, Gimme liberty or death in 1492. And Barbara Fritchie, so to said, cried, Shoot if you must, this old gray head, but I'd rather twould be your own instead in 1492. The pilgrims came to Plymouth Rock in 1492, and the Indians standing on the dock asked, What are you going to do? And they said, We seek your harbor drear, that our children's children's children dear may boast that their forefathers landed here in 1492. Miss Pocahontas saved the life in 1492 of John Smith and became his wife in 1492. And the Smith tribe started then and there, and now there are John Smiths everywhere, but they didn't have any Smiths to spare in 1492. Kentucky was settled by Daniel Boone in 1492, and I think the cow jumped over the moon in 1492. Ben Franklin flew his kite so high he drew the lightning from the sky, and Washington couldn't tell a lie in 1492. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Lazy Man's Song, A.D. 811, by Po Chu Yi. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. I have got patronage, but am too lazy to use it. I have got land, but am too lazy to farm it. My house leaks. I am too lazy to mend it. My clothes are torn. I am too lazy to darn them. I have got wine, but am too lazy to drink. So it's just the same as if my cellar were empty. I have got a harp, but am too lazy to play. So it's just the same as if it had no strings. My wife tells me there is no more bread in the house. I want to bake but am too lazy to grind. My friends and relatives write me long letters. I should like to read them, but they're such a bother to open. I have always been told that Chi Shu Ye passed his whole life in absolute idleness, but he played a harp and sometimes transmuted metals. So even he was not so lazy as I. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Lockless Door by Robert Frost. Read for LibriVox.org by Leah. It went many years, but at last came a knock, and I thought of the door with no lock to lock. I blew out the light. I tiptoed the floor, and raised both hands in prayer to the door. But the knock came again, my window was wide. I climbed on the sill and descended outside. Back over the sill I bade a come in, to whoever the knock at the door may have been. So at a knock I emptied my cage, to hide in the world an altar with age. 
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Mithridates by Ralph Waldo Emerson. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. I cannot spare water or wine, tobacco leaf or poppy or rose. From the earth poles to the line, all between that works or grows, everything is kin of mine. Give me agates for my meat, give me cantharids to eat. From air and ocean bring me foods, from all zones and altitudes. From all natures, sharp and slimy, salt and basalt, wild and tame, shree and lichen, ape, sea lion, bird and reptile, be my game. Ivy for my fillet band, blinding dogwood in my hand, hemlock for my sherbet cull me, and the prusic juice to lull me. Swing me in the upas boughs, vampire fan where I carouse. Too long shut in straight and few, thinly dieted on dew. I will use the world and sift it, to a thousand humors shift it, as you spin a cherry. O oh, doleful ghosts, and goblins merry, O oh, all you virtues, methods, mights, means, appliances, delights, reputed wrongs and braggards' rights, smug routine and things allowed, minorities, things under cloud. Hither, take me, use me, fill me, vein and artery, though you kill me, End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Remorseful Apology by Robert Burns. Read for LibriVox.org by Clarica. The friend whom, wild from wisdom's way, the fumes of wine and fury at send, not moony madness more astray, who but deplores that hapless friend? Mine was the insensate frenzied part. Ah, oh, why should I such scenes outlive? Scenes so abhorrent to my heart. Tis thine to pity and forgive. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Song from Mater by Percy McKay. Read for LibriVox.org by Clarica. Long ago in the young moonlight I lost my heart to a hero. Strong and tender and stern and right, Darker than night and terribler than Nero. Hey, but he was dear, oh! And there to bind our fellowship, I laughed at him, and a moment after I laughed again till he bit his lip, For the test of love is laughter. Lord and Master, look up, I cried. I wreathe your brow with a laurel, Gloom and wisdom and right and pride. Cast them aside, and kiss, and cure our quarrel, never mind the moral. Alas, with strange and saddened eyes he looked on me, and my mirth grew dafter, to feel the flush of his dark surprise, for the zest of love is laughter. Long ago in the old moonlight I lost my hero and lover, strong and tender and stern and right, Never shall night nor day his brow uncover. Ah, my heart, that is over. Yet still, for the joy of fellowship that bound us both through the years long after, I laugh to think how he bit his lip, for the test of love, and the best of love, is laughter. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Song of Myself, Section 17, read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. These are really the thoughts of all men in all ages and lands. They are not original with me. If they are not yours as much as mine, they are nothing, or next to nothing. 
if they are not the riddle and the untying of the riddle they are nothing if they are not just as close as they are distant they are nothing this is the grass that grows wherever the land is and the water is this the common air that bathes the globe end of poem this recording is in the public domain this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain sussex by rudyard kipling Read for LibriVox.org by David Barnes in Rottingdean, Sussex. God gave all men all earth to love, But since our hearts are small, Ordained for each one spot should prove Beloved over all, That as he watched creation's birth, So we, in godlike mood, May of our love create our earth, And see that it is good. So one shall Baltic pines content, As one some sorry glade, Or one the palm groves droned lament Before Levuka's trade. Each to his choice, and I rejoice The lot has fallen to me, In a fair ground, in a fair ground, Yea, Sussex by the sea. No tender-hearted garden crowns, No bosomed woods adorn our blunt, bow-headed, whale-backed downs, but gnarled and rhythm thorn. Bare slopes where chasing shadows skim, and through the gaps revealed, belt upon belt, the wooded, dim, blue goodness of the weald. Clean of officious fence or hedge, half wild and wholly tame, the wise turf cloaks the white cliff edge, as when the Romans came. What sign of those that fought and died At shift of sword and sword? The barrow and the camp abide, The sunlit and the sward. Here leaps ashore the full sou-west, All heavy winged with brine, Here lies above the folded crest The channel's leaden line. And here the sea-fogs lap and cling, And here each warning each, The sheep-bells and the ship-bells ring Along the hidden beach. We have no waters to delight our broad and brookless vales, Only the dew-pond on the height, unfed, that never fails, Whereby no tattered herbage tells which way the season flies, Only our close-bit time that smells like dawn in paradise. Here through the strong and shadeless days the tinkling silence thrills, or little, lost, down churches praise the Lord who made the hills. And here the old gods guard their round, And in her secret heart the heathen kingdom Wilfred found Dreams as she dwells apart. Though all the rest were all my share, With equal soul I'd see her nine and thirty sisters fair, Yet none more fair than she. Choose ye your need from Thames to Tweed, And I will choose instead Such lands as lie twixt rake and rye, Black down and beachy head. I will go out against the sun, Where the rolled scarp retires, And the long man of Wilmington Looks naked toward the shires, And east till doubling rother crawls To find the fickle tide, By dry and sea-forgotten walls, our ports of stranded pride. I will go north about the shores, And the deep gills that breed, Huge oaks and old, The which we hold no more than Sussex weed, Or south where windy piddinghoes Begilded dolphin veers, And red beside wide banked ooze Lie down our Sussex steers. So to the land our hearts we give, Till the shore magic strike, and memory, use, and love make live, Us and our fields alike, That deeper than our speech and thought Beyond our reason's sway, Clay of the pit whence we were wrought Yearns to its fellow clay. God gives all men all earth to love, But since man's heart is small, 
ordains for each one spot shall prove beloved over all each to his choice and i rejoice the lot has fallen to me in a fair ground in a fair ground yea sussex by the sea end of poem this recording is in the public domain To a Distant Friend by William Wordsworth Read for LibriVox.org by Clarica Why art thou silent? Is thy love a plant of such weak fibre that the treacherous air of absence withers what was once so fair? Is there no debt to pay, no boon to grant? Yet have my thoughts for thee been vigilant, bound to thy service with unceasing care the mind's least generous wish a mendicant, for naught but what thy happiness could spare. Speak, though this soft, warm heart, once free to hold a thousand tender pleasures, thine and mine, be left more desolate, more dreary cold than a forsaken bird's nest filled with snow, mid its own bush of leafless eglantine. Speak, that my torturing doubts their end may know, End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The War Films by Henry New Bolt. Read for LibriVox.org by Podvoxer. O living pictures of the dead, O songs without a sound, O fellowship whose phantom tread hallows the phantom ground, how in a gleam have these revealed the faith we have not found. We have sought God in a cloudy heaven, we have passed by God on earth, his seven sins and his sorrows seven, his wayworn mood and mirth, like a ragged cloak had hid from us the secret of his birth. Brother of men, when now I see the lads go forth in line, thou knowest my heart is hungry in me as for thy bread and wine, thou knowest my heart is bowed in me to take their death for mine. End of The War Films this recording is in the public domain. When Earth's Last Picture is Painted by Rudyard Kipling Read for LibriVox.org by David Barnes When Earth's last picture is painted And the tubes are twisted and dried When the oldest colours have faded And the youngest critic has died we shall rest, and faith we shall need it, Lie down for an eon or two, Till the master of all good workmen Shall put us to work anew. And those that were good shall be happy, They shall sit in a golden chair, They shall splash at a ten-league canvas With brushes of comet's hair, They shall find real saints to draw from, Magdalene, Peter, and Paul, they shall work for an age at a sitting, and never be tired at all. And only the Master shall praise us, and only the Master shall blame, and no one shall work for money, and no one shall work for fame, but each for the joy of the working, and each in his separate star shall draw the thing as he sees it, for the God of things as they are. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. When Lovely Woman by Phoebe Carey Read for LibriVox.org by Leanne Howlett When lovely woman wants a favor And finds, too late, that man won't bend, what earthly circumstance can save her from disappointment in the end? The only way to bring him over, the last experiment to try, whether a husband or a lover, if he has feeling, is to cry. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A White Rose by John Boyle O'Reilly Read for LibriVox.org by Clarica The red rose whispers of passion, And the white rose breathes of love. Oh, the red rose is a falcon, And the white rose is a dove. 
but I send you a cream-white rosebud with a flush on its petal tips, for the love that is purest and sweetest has a kiss of desire on the lips. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.